Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Michael Ray, uh, one of the ECAD Star sales uh, chaps here at Quadra Solutions. Um, thank you all very much for joining us today. I can see lots of uh, comments coming through of who can hear us and who's attending. So I think we'll make a start. Uh, it looks like we're pretty much a, a full house. So um, very quickly today, it's just an introduction to ECAD Star. Um, hopefully most of you are aware what's happened on the journey with, with Classic CAD Star. This will hopefully fill in some gaps as well. Um, I'll just go through the introduction um, and let you know who's here today from Quadra Solutions. Just move on to the next slide. And as you're hopefully all aware and, and, and appreciate what we're doing at the moment, working from home, and doing these shows are uh, very, extremely challenging. Uh, we've got me speaking, and then there's uh, Vicky doing the slideshow. We've got Sarah with some videos. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to have some good fun trying to uh, deliver this to you today. But here, ho, fingers crossed, all will go well. So quick introduction. So most of you uh, I'm pretty aware of. I've spoke to you in the past. Uh, sales for UK, Benelux and Scandinavia is myself. Uh, we've got Sarah. I'm not going to pronounce her surname for two reasons. One, I can't. And two, yeah, I don't want to do it. So uh, I'm sure Sarah will come in shortly and uh, let you know her surname. She's our ECAD star applications engineer, um, our sort of ECAD star guru, um, the go-to person for ECAD star. Uh, anything she doesn't know, she's our first line to Zookin uh, support. So also today, we've got Vicky Last, our ECAD star marketing manager has a much more simpler surname than Sarah. And yeah, she's been very helpful in getting this webinar up and running. And then finally, and not least, uh, my colleague, Ian Collier, who assists with ECAD Star Sales, predominantly south of Birmingham. And just in regards to Quadra, um, hopefully you are all aware, we're, as well as being the reseller for Zookin's CAD Star, and now of course ECAD Star uh, for over 20 years. We're a very large PCB design bureau, with customers throughout the world, predominantly UK and Europe. Uh, we're also the training provider for IPC CID. So if anyone's interested in that formal qualification as well, do let us know and we can come back to you with more information on that. And um, obviously we offer training as well for both CAD Star and eCAD Star. So a brief introduction there into who we are today. I will now go through a bit of a summary. Uh, we're gonna try and keep it very brief today. Uh, we are regularly running demonstrations of the software and in all honesty they can take anywhere between two and three hours and even then we're only really scratching the surface of the software um so today you'll be pleased it's only going to be 30 40 minutes just some of the key points about ecad star which will hopefully be of interest to you first and foremost we're going to give you an update on classic cad star then we're going to go through some key differences between the two um, discussing then a handful of points which we thought would be of interest today um, we'll perhaps be doing another one of these uh, later in the year with some other uh, questions and thoughts that have been put our way. But today we're going to specifically look at design migration and design reuse, um, enhanced online part search and the advanced 3D design. Um, lots of new features in the PCB routing. And then, quite honestly, probably one of the longer slides we, we could have spent more time on is actually what we've not covered. Um, but it'll give you an insight. And then finally... We'll touch on a QA and a um, in the interim. If there are any questions, um, I, I can see one coming through from Chris there. We would ask if possible, if they could go in the chat function. Um, and Chris, yes, we'll happily come back to you on your question there. Um, we can do PCB layout for both, obviously, CAD star, eCAD star. Incidentally, we have various other tools in our PCB design bureau but obviously they're our main tools. So Chris, we will definitely come back to you on, the, on your comment there about our layout service. Um, so thank you for that. Feel free to drop questions, by the way, on the chat throughout. We'll try and acknowledge them and, and if we can answer them as we go along. Alternatively, you can feel free to send them at the end and we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you that way. Moving on. So the update on Classic CAD Star. Uh, you'll all probably know, very powerful tool, Classic CAD Star. Um, well liked by lots of customers, but it is over 30 years old now. Um, 30 years, a hell of a lot of, has changed in those 30 years. Um, when it was originally created, it was using the latest technology that was around at the time, 
single processor, 32 bit. Things have changed, obviously. Um, and, and whilst the software will continue to be supported, for us to be able to develop that software, we've had to move uh, and we've had to create something new. It's been literally just totally saturated. Um, we literally can't build on that platform anymore. Um, so um, yes, we're going to support classic software, uh, classic uh, software, but you know we're now in the process of moving uh, a significant part that we have done already of CAD style customers over to eCAD style. Um, what we've been able to do is be able to ensure customers will have a smooth migration over to eCAD style, and obviously one of the benefits we're offering customers if they uh, do come on board on this journey, you get to use both software in parallel. So, you know, you're only paying for one. You've got classic CAD star working on, uh, on the same dongle. Uh, we would, uh, eCAD star comes actually on the same dongle with a different license file and you can pick and choose the right time uh, on what projects you move over. Um, so moving on to the next slide, some of the key differences between CAD star and eCAD star. Um, uh, some of the key differences between the classic CAD star and eCAD star. Again, we've just had to keep this sort of brief, um, try and, you know, keep it within the time span. But I think one of the biggest differences, as well as having that platform now using this latest technology that we can continuously develop, um, is the fact that we've got a uni unified design environment for both the schematic, the routine, 3D and our high speed tools. Well, so our competitors and indeed classic CAD star used to almost have quite a few separate applications running alongside the software. And uh, now we've got a unified GUI amongst all the, the tools within there. Um, we're using that latest technology, um, the 64 bit um, multi-core processor for speed uh, and the fact we can develop and, and continue to develop on there. One of the things we've found by speaking to lots of engineers and particularly maybe with working on sociable hours and weekends, one of the things they really like to be able to do is online learning, being able to go to how-to documents, videos themselves, uh, that they can find themselves to show how to do things. One of the things we like to think at Quadra, we set ourselves against our competitors is actually our support team. So that by telephone or email, you can come to us and we'll very quickly get you up and running. And of course, we want to lend that arm to this as well we'll certainly be there to assist you. But should you want to go off, there's a, a very good training DIY manual built into the software. And again, lots of videos uh, and lots of online learning help. Um, the, the product bundles of the new software, again, we'll happily speak to customers in more detail, but it's much more simplified and much less restricted than the old bundles that CADSTAR used to offer. We've now, of course, got the facility to have 3D design environment, a full uh, natively built in within the software. And we've got a web browser for our web enabled features, um, which thankfully Sarah will come on and be able to show you those in a bit more detail in a short while. And LT Spice, most engineers these days are doing some form of simulation and will be familiar with LT Spice. We've now got the facility, uh, we've got it at beta release at the moment, so it's not quite there for our customers, but it will be coming shortly where we can run the simulation all natively embedded in the software. Vicky, I'll pass over to you. I don't know if you had any specifics you wanted to ask Sarah about in regards to the videos that she's created for us. Absolutely. So um, one of the questions that we, we regularly get told about is that we would like to know about more about how you migrate CADSTAR design files into eCADSTAR. So I'm going to pass over to Sarah and let her talk about this. Hello everyone. I've put a, uh, together some videos to show you. Uh, this one's about design migration. So go on, Sarah, just very quickly if you can, say your surname if you would. Santa Angeli. That's it. That's me done. Santa That's Angeli. Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> so if we open the classic Castar design, so both the PCB and the schematic, and make sure that they're uh, cohesive, so make sure the um, you know, you've done an ECO and reloaded from the library, etc. And then all we need to do is export both of these, um, both the schematic and the PCB as an archive file. So a .csa and a .cpo. So here I'm just exporting the schematic. 
as an archive file, make sure you click whole design. I think this design is actually eight pages long. So this design is actually the one I use in the demonstrations. It was a real live uh, job that came through to Quadra's design bureau. So um, it's quite a large uh, design to show, quite risky. <laughs> so here we've got our CPA and .CSA file ready then to be migrated into eCAD star. So open eCAD star. Hello. I'm opening the schematic editor here. So eCASTA has three editors, the library editor, the schematic editor, and the PCB editor. They all do talk to each other, so they're not separated. I'll show you how uh, quickly they do uh, talk to each other. So we open the CASTA migration um, tool, and then we just point to those archive files that we've just created. We click Next. So here's a mapping file, so you can specify um, specifics in here. Uh, you can do some layer mapping, et cetera, et cetera, in there. I'm just going to use this automatically. Map layers using their CASTAR layer subtype here. So I've just checked that. It's the sort of default setting. And then we just need to specify an empty directory for this design to go to. And we click finish, so it's quite a large design. So the CASTAR is busy migrating that um, schematic and PCB design. And once this is finished, it will then uh, open the PCB design in the PCB editor and also the schematic design. So it's successful. You do have a log there as well. You might need to go and check the, the log and see if you want to do anything about it or leave it as it is. So this is the PCB design that I've brought through. So turn off uh, some of the layers and we can have a little look at the um, conductor layers. There. And then you can check check the designs come through as you as you like. Just deploying some filters there. We can have a little look. So it's brought that through quite nicely. Yeah. So you can see how, how quick and easy that was to uh, move your designs over into eCAD star. So it's, it's not as scary as it first seems. <laughs> so this is the schematic. So you can see we've got some uh, classic CAD star colors there. So it's brought through the classic CAD star colors. You can obviously um, change these. There's lots and lots of view settings and um, customization settings in, in eCAD star. So you can um, customize all day if you want to <laughs> uh, set up how, how you like your colors. Okay, that's a seven page schematic there. Okay, also uh, when you migrate a design, it will create a local library you can see there for that particular design. So you can have it as a standalone design just using the local library or when you uh, migrate your master library you can then link the design up to the master library as well so you can have it as a single entity or um, you link it to the master library so that's design migration very easy thing to do. <laughs> okay thanks Sarah Ooh, I'm sorry, I think it's playing it again for some reason um, thanks for that um, can you also tell me about the web enabled features within ECAB stuff so there's quite a few web enabled features in eCADSTAR. So we have uh, lots of partners like Samaxis and Silicon Expert for web bomb tools. Um, in this uh, video, I'm going to show how to um, utilize electronic component information providers. And I will be using Samaxis uh, to do this. So I can show you how quickly you can download parts and incorporate them into your design. So there I've just clicked web lookup preferences. This is available from any of the start pages. You've got some distributors there, RS, uh, DigiKey, and you can see there we've got an EKIP, um, and I've chosen some access there. So we can uh, use RS, DigiKey, Miles there to have a little look at the pricing of, of components. So you can compare stock and pricing. 
you'll see here as I'm uh, going through the editors how unified the GUI is. Uh, we have some links here to our DIY training interactive tour. You can access your recent calls on ZGS, etc. So I'll just uh, start in the schematic editor. I've activated the library searcher here. This is available in the PCB editor as well. And I'm going to search for a part. So this part's already in my library. I'm placing it down there just to show you. The library searcher, you can deploy loads of filters. So here I'm searching uh, via the part name. You can see that dockable window comes up as well if I want to interrogate the attributes further as well. And you can see a, um, a preview of the footprint and the symbol. So here I am um, deploying a filter by part class and adding a diode. These you can define in the library. Okay, so place a few of those down. So what happens if I search for a part which isn't in my library? Not a problem in ECAD star. We can then press on this little globe icon here, and then it will take us to our ECIP, our electronic component information provider, and do a search for downloadable parts. And as you can see, we can see the, the 3D model, the footprint, and the symbol, and we can click free download. You might need to sign into your Symaxis account or your provider's account. And look how quick that is. It's straight on the cursor, ready to place. It's already in my library. That is now mine. I can now edit them as I wish to my requirements. If I then double click um, to go into edit part, this is the part editor. So you can see the communication between the editors here. And then open into the footprints. And then I can double click my mouse wheel just to enter into the 3D environment. And we can take a look at the attached 3D model here. Okay, so the 3D models are attached um, to the footprint. So you add them in, in the properties panel. You can make your own uh, 3D models as well. And I'll add them this way. You don't have to use um, your provider's models if you don't want to. So again, uh, this time I'm just going to demonstrate on a blank PCB, the library searcher again, we'll search for some parts and how it works and we can put them straight in. So obviously we've already got this one in our library now. And we can, we can search for some more. I think in this video, I place some, some nice ones that I've found that I quite like. <laughs> some nice models there to show. And I'll, I'll also um, download a couple more as well and some access just to show you that function again. You see how consistent the editors are with, with the library search. Yeah, it really is brilliant. It's so, it's so fast um, to filter and search through the, your part database. So this one was obviously not in the library. So I'll click the globe icon. I can then check the prices if I want to have a look at the uh, models and the footprints and place it directly. There you go. So I think I've got a couple more on this video that I, I put down. And again, so this is a totally free service this as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, it is totally free. It's a brilliant service and they are all IPC compliant as well. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. And also, if, if you can't find a part, um, you know, you can request them. And uh, Smaxis usually do turn them around within 24 hours. We also have our web bomb, uh, web bomb tool um, with one of our partners, Silicon Experts. So if you have an account in there, uh, with them, that is also embedded into ECAD star, so that's quite useful. You can actually download a 14 day uh, free trial of that as well, if you, if you um, want to explore Silicon Expert, have a look at risk of components and that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, great stuff. Thank you for that, Sarah. Um, I'm aware that we've now got 3D 
capabilities embedded into each ad star. Could you uh, could we go to uh, the next video and we'll uh, talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah, as most customers will know, we, we did have some 3D software with classic CAD star, but um, A, it wasn't uh, very cheap, should we say, and two, um, B, should I say, it, it was another separate application worked alongside. We've got a much more, more powerful function now natively embedded within the software, and Sarah's video here will give us a quick snapshot of, uh, of what it does. So CAD star does have some really useful 3D checking capabilities. So in this video, I've brought in a mechanical enclosure um, for this uh, PCB. If we toggle on collision notice, as you can see here, you will see that the area is highlighted on the same axis of this switch, even though the sides of this enclosure are not enabled in the design tree, it has also just brought them through anyway, just to give me a warning that this switch could then collide um, with that side. That's really useful. You can also uh, change the color of that notice as well in the canvas view settings. So this is a collision check. This allows us to check components that have, um, to have a sufficient clearance uh, to a mechanical part. So here's one of my um, checks. Oh, I mean, uh, clearance check. <laughs> so here I'm just setting up a rule here, which is um, just to check the uh, all of the top side components to this rear panel. And then we can execute the check. Okay, so it's uh, noticed some uh, violations here. So we have a nice report. We can then export this report or we can specify actions against each violation. So we can uh, request a modification. We can then export this and then use this in design reviews. Okay. You can see there that eCastar has actually put those measurements onto the canvas as well, so we can see those clearances. eCastar also has the ability to check traces against the mechanical part. So here I'm checking a voltage net against the front panel. Here. They're just flicking through 3D and 2D mode easily just a double click on the, on the mouse wheel. So this is my check here. So we specify the net name, the clearance we like, we want to use. And we add that check, okay. So it's, it's spotted a violation here as well. So again, we can export that. Uh, we can then go back and uh, do some rerouting and make some changes, etc. So with mechanical checking available in eCadStar, we no longer need to pass the design to and from the mechanical department for 3D checking. Having the ability to do this within eCadStar can really increase the productivity of, of your business. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Um, any chance you can uh, give us a preview of some of the advanced routing tools within eCadStar? Yeah, absolutely. I think we have a video of, uh, I've created this video just to show uh, some of the routing tools, not not all of them. Um, I try to incorporate as many as possible. There's just so many. <laughs> so dynamic teardrops. With the teardrop toggled on in the add route dialog, we can transition from a large to a larger track with ease. The great thing about this feature is the teardrop is dynamically connected. So in a moment, once I place a track, I'm going to move this teardrop and you will see that it still remains in place and connected to that, that track. Okay. 
Can you see? You can also see the clearance, the dotted line there around. That's um, my clearance rule that I've set up. So push aside, we also have the uh, push aside uh, feature. You can see my clearance boundary there around pushing, pushing that track aside. Automatic pin swapping. So we can come out and you can see that that non-polarized device, the net is uh, connected to the right pin there. So we can connect that way. As I come out again um, of, the, of this pin, you can see that the other um, pad is also highlighted with the double circle. So you can see it's added a uh, notification there that the pins have been swapped. That's quite useful. Fan out, we're gonna fan out this uh, BGA. We we'll select, select the BGA and our, on our pad stack we wish to fan out, executes a, a fan out report. And that was uh, very quick and easy. Bus end routing, so we can select um, these pads here, add a route in a nice, uh, in a nice trunk. So you can see that directional arrow there, which is indicating how to approach the, uh, the destination of the end connections there. So what I can do is um, right click and ECASTAR will then plot that uh, route for me to, to terminate those ends. You see that in the 3D window. So we have a uh, route to end here. So uh, route to end, then plot a path um, on the canvas. So here I'm creating some fires and then I'm going to copy uh, that uh, routing pattern there. And I'm just going to show you that ECASTAR, um, in ECASTAR you don't have to snap to the center of, of the pad. It knows that there is a logical connection there. So in, that, in my canvas view, I have turned um, a setting on so that you can see at, in the route that net has been inherited from that of the pin. So you can see that there. You can also turn that setting on if you do wish to snap to, to the center. Okay, let's trunk route um, those uh, vias out there. Okay, so these are all um, dynamically connected now. So I'll show you in a moment, if you move them, they will all move together as a single entity. And then what we can do if we want to separate them is we do what we call uh, decompose the trunk. Okay, so I'll just move it, show you they're all nicely connected there. Copper floods. So draw a shape, specify an object that has a net, and then we can draw our shape around there. Okay. So we can go into the properties um, and generate a conductor layer. So we can use that same shape to create another uh, flood on a different layer. So here you can see I've popped one on layer eight. You can see the uh, stack up in the 3D window there that I've created. So we can have two instances open. You can see that that singular shape now controls both of those planes. Okay. If we go into the uh, template parameters, there's uh, quite a few settings in there. Look at those isolated bits of copper there. We can turn those figures off and get rid of those, you see. And we can also specify our thermal release settings as well. There are many ways to specify thermal relief. You can see um, here, we can flood this out um, just by clicking on the pad itself. So this one uh, is a manufacturer's nightmare. So we can change that um, on the pad level in the, in the pad properties as well, just to override the, the template settings. Okay. So now we can stitch this with um, 
these two planes together with the bias. So we select um, both, both of those planes on conductor one and conductor eight, and then we have a preview. Once we're in, uh, we like the preview, we can then click execute. And then you can see that stack up as well in the, in the um, 3D window there. So it's really good at uh, the 3D capabilities of, of just, you know, uh, watching how, how your board um, is being built. So if we do some routing through our, through our via stitching, you will notice that eCastDart will push aside those bias. And then once we finish the route, it will automatically plow, plow that copper through with our, with our clearances. I'll show you in a second. That's a really, really a useful tool to have. Finish. Uh, we've got automatic repo on, so good. Okay, here I am just um, adding a, a root on a different layer. We've got VCC2, if I remember rightly. And um, I'm going to add another uh, flood to this shape, um, but using a different net. So it won't be deground as, as these two are. We're going to add one um, to this net called VCC2. So we go back into our properties, our conductor set, and we can add a power plane. You see, see two, add. So you can see in the 3D window that coming through there with the clearances around the buyers. <clears throat> Excuse me. auto root so we can select a net and or a couple of nets and ecastar will root these for us so this is included at base level and it's been extracted from ecastar's auto router which is um, one of the add-ons we have template routing so here i'm going to use the layout outline to then uh, generate some roots using this shape. Then I can select a couple of nets, so 3.3 volts, and then we can select some more nets and it will add those on. Um, okay, differential pairs. So here I'm just uh, specifying uh, larger track and spacing in conductor four and then we can calculate differential impedance you can also calculate the differential impedance from the chat width and vice versa so we pick up um if we select one of these um signals from the differential pair it will automatically pick up the other one and then we can route them simultaneously and go and now I just switched to uh, layer four, I think it was, conductor four, just to show you that difference there. So you can see it's picked up the rules there. So I'll come back up to here, conductor one. So these are all uh, on default on hotkeys, uh, your conductors, so you can easily switch through layers. You can see that directional arrow there again, indicating that we need to approach from this particular angle in order to reach our termination point. So it comes through live in the 3D window. I just like to make a point as well. Uh, the, 
the the 3D view um, is actually functional. You know, it's not there just to look pretty. Um, you can use it for placement. Um, it's very, very functional. You know, you can move things around. Um, you know, I just uh, I put a little view on there just so you can see the routing live in the 3D environment as well. And then you can check um, how your ball is going to be built um, as well, which all comes through live as well in, in the 3D window. You can also, um, you know, flick with double click of the mouse wheel. You don't have to have two instances open of the same design. And um, there's lots and lots of options there. I will pass um, pass you back to Michael. And thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Sarah, for running through some of the videos there. Um, just to, to highlight to people, you know, today we could have spent hours and hours and hours. We really have just skimmed the surface, really, of just some of the advanced features. Um, we will be doing some other webinars later this year, I'm sure, again, highlighting some of the things we've not had chance to look at today. Um, just some of those, um, the Gerber import, a fantastic feature, which is uh, the best implementation we've seen of any Gerber import tool that's out there. Um, root shielding, um, fan out via spiral, uh, spirals, uh, divided design. That's, that's another huge one because while some of our competitors have that, they only have it at a very, very expensive level. And this comes as standard with an ECAD star. So you can have multiple engineers working in the schematic, on the same schematic, um, different sheets, and within the routing tool as well. You can cut corner bits of boards off and spend, send over to maybe a, an RF specialist or a power specialist, or, or just maybe because you want to be working as, as fast as you can on a board. Um, and multiple engineers can then section off bits of board and, and collaborate with each other. Um, so that's a great feature. Uh, intelligent PDF, copy placement, um, technology files, design reuse. There's multiple DRC tools, the online post check and manual. Um, the web bomb tool with Silicon Expert, like Sarah touched on at the beginning, is, is another great feature, again, utilizing the web that we have. And uh, there is, there's, there's literally so much more we, we could add there. I think today was really just to try and give you a little bit of a taster, really, of, of what we have got. Um, and obviously, things to, to come later this year, we'll hopefully be able to show you again. And, and what I would say to anyone with, with any interest, obviously, I know we've got some questions that have come through, which we'll, I'll chat with Sarah about and uh, we, we can hopefully answer. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully we've, uh, we've covered some basis there for people and they've enjoyed seeing a, a very basic initial look at uh, ECAD Star, really. Just some final features which we don't have as yet. I know uh, we touched on it in the uh, in the demo. The Spice controller we've actually got at beta now. We're testing that. Um, we're expecting that very very soon. Um, hopefully just after the summer. Uh, Creepage, which is due in the 2021 release, uh, which is scheduled for uh, April time. Uh, Rinf import and uh, enhanced scripting and the import um, ADIF 200 schematic. So. Again, just highlighting that, really, we've now got a tool that will be significantly invested in year on year to make it um, improvements. Um, and, and now we've got that platform with the new software. Most customers we've spoke to have been aware that the tool that it was, Classic CAD Star, needed this revamp, needed this upgrade. And, um, well, we're three years into it now. In April of this year, it's been out for three years. And uh, we've had a, a good influx of on maintenance customers update, a nice selection of some new customers as well, which is which is great. Um, and yeah, things are going very, very well with it. So um, following on from that, um, I think we'll just hand over to see if there's any other questions. Uh, I can see already uh, there's a few. So I don't know if you say, Sarah, you're OK if I fire a couple of these at you and you can maybe come back and, uh, and answer some of these. Um, uh, I think one I can answer myself, Mark, uh, uh, has mentioned the migration feature for third-party schematic editors. That will be incorporated, Mark. At the, currently, we've obviously been focusing on the migration from classic CAD star to eCAD star, but uh, Zookan development team are working on um, uh, migration tools for our competitors' software, and that is on the roadmap for hopefully this year, but possibly 2022 as well. Um, so that's certainly work in progress. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you've got access to some of those other questions. I know there's been one through from Alan regarding the auto fillet function for multi-tap tracking. Uh, 
Um, yeah, so there's, there's quite a few um, routing styles there um, as well. So um, we can come back to you with a little bit more information about the specific features um, that we have available. Yeah, so we'll do that. And Paul, um, your question there. Yes, the, you can go on to the ECAD style website and there's a link to the free design viewers um, for both schematic and PCB. So they're all there on the ECAD style website. You'll also find a host of videos on there as well on some of the features that we've not touched on today. Um, Sarah's been very, very busy working away on these videos. Um, and yes, we used a sample today, but there's a, there's a lot more on the ECAD style website as well. Um, and then I think the only other one was... Uh, Michael, I've got two questions for you. Yeah, sure, go um, for it. We've got, can multi-board features be shown? So I'm not quite sure what to, is it Mario on that one? Yeah, Mario, yeah. If you um, mean um, a, a stack up, you can export um, the PCB. If you've got multiple PCBs in an enclosure, for an example, and um, you can export uh, one PCB um, as a stack file and then bring it in as a... Uh, ah, right. Right, yeah. No, that, that um, makes sense then on that one. The other one that I think we had outstanding, and I don't know if Sarah can uh, um, go on to this one here or we need to come back to it, was from Gert regarding the macros running after migration. Um, so basically, what about macros running after migration and setting up your own uh, your own covers? Um, yeah, so you can set up your own colours. You can do actually do this from the library. Um, you can define uh, the, the colours for the schematic in the library uh, and bring it through that way. Uh, you can also set up the, the sheet colours as well from the schematic. Um, I, I presume you can do this from macro as well. Um, I know we are having a, in the next release, we will have extended functionality in macros. So um, not sure what that will entail yet, but I know that we can... Um, we will have access to external things at, um, from, from ECADSTAR. Um, so we'll have a bit more functionality. Okay. I think yeah, there's one thanks. final question from Paul. Um, can we customize manufacturing output? Yes, so we have a, the report generator. So you can custom, customize um, reports. Um, there's lots and lots of options in there. Uh, so you can Italy is also released an advanced report generator for, for your outputs. Um, lots and lots of settings in there um, to customise it to your business. Great. I think we've answered all the questions. Um, can I say thank you very much for your participation today and thank you very much to both Michael and Sarah for their contribution to the presentation. If you do have any further questions, by all means, please contact us. Um, Michael, how do people get in contact with them as if they are interested in further re further exploring ECAD stuff? Well, yep, certainly good question. Both Ian and I will be following up to everyone who's attended today just with a thank you email for thank you for attending. We'll also be giving you the opportunity if there's anything that we've not covered or any questions, feel free. Um, we would be happy. We're going to be running several um more in-depth front to back online demos really but like i say bear in mind these tend to take two to two and a half hours um we're going to be running these throughout april may june july the summer etc so invites will be going out to those feel free to uh, to attend and register to get a better understanding from the uh from the whole software um and yeah we'd be very happy putting together together proposals for you to understand costs um, and how it would work from there um, but yes, in short answer, both Ian and I will be coming back to customers at some point next week with an email, uh, giving them the opportunity to ask further questions or engage in a proposal. Great. Right. And I think we'll probably say thank you for attending and we look forward to speaking to everybody soon. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we look forward to hopefully speaking to you with any other questions that we need, we need to answer for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye.